everyone and welcome back to my booktube channel Lisa in Bookland. This is part two of my May reading wrap up and I'll link part one down below where I talk about the one Victorian classic that I read in May and the good few modern classics I read for the readathon May of the Moderns. The first book I'm going to talk about is Dark Fire by CJ Sanson which is the second book in the Matthew Shardlake series and takes place in Tudor England. So Matthew Shardlake is a lawyer. In the first book he was sent by Thomas Cromwell to oversee the dissolution of this monastery and um, he becomes involved in the kind of a the crime investigation there and there's a similar kind of thing going on here. Um, I don't really want to say and much about how the circumstances of the last book ended. There's a crime again where a girl is accused of murder where this boy was pushed down a well and died um, and she's refusing to speak um, but there's also another strand um, which the book is named after about dark fire which is like um, as some kind of alchemical fire that can burn on water and he becomes kind of embroiled in a secret to do with that. So yeah, I really enjoyed this book. I don't think I enjoyed it quite as much as the first one, but I really, really liked the first one, I suppose, just the whole um, really enclosed nature of it. But um, yeah, look, Matthew Shardlake is such a fascinating and brilliant character. And I really like the sidekick he has in this book as well. Um, I don't want to give any more details, like I said, but yeah, he was brilliant. Um, and actually this ended up kind of being a surprise suitable read for the Spoonies Readathon, um, which was hosted by um, two lovely book who I linked below um, because there was a not a not Shard Lake Shard Lake the thing about him is he has a um, a hunchback uh, he has scoliosis and he actually his struggles with that in this book are really really interesting but there was a plot that would fit in well with the Spoonies readathon um, albeit a quite a minor one which dealt with invisible disabilities and um, there was a man that um, had very bad eyesight and I suppose he was trying to conceal it which was uh, which is interesting the way that was dealt with um, so yeah really really enjoyed this one again and uh, yeah can't wait to read the next in the series which I already have on my shelf so I actually read two more historical fictions and these these two were actually both from my in-person book club and um, we thought they'd be a good read together. So the first one I'm going to talk about is Briar Hill to Brooklyn um, by Jack Bodkin and um, this is the, probably the main book of the book club. The second one was kind of picked to contrast with this so um, kind of an, an unusual situation I suppose the organiser of the book club um, through various circumstances actually managed to get the author who is from America um, in to talk to our book club. He was visiting Ireland and uh, yeah he came along and we a really really fun discussion he was lovely so the basis of this book really is that um jack, jack bodkin's actual uh, family his real family emigrated from uh briar hill which is a place in galway um to uh brooklyn in the 1840s during the great famine and uh yeah it's just telling the story of their time so the first half of the book um is set on the coffin ship that they go into um like the very kind of gory details i think what struck everybody in the book club was kind of how most which they, they weren't in the worst circumstances in the ship because they did have some connections and they were able to afford, um, they weren't like the poorest of the poor, they were able to afford some nicey things for themselves and they all got there okay whereas many of their fellow passengers did die and had much more difficult circumstances in the first place. Um, and then the second half of the book was really interesting as well, um, just like about them, how they integrated into our society and became successful I suppose. It's a story that also often occurred, like I mean Irish Americans are like an ethnic group because uh, and, and are quite often very successful people I suppose they pre played a big bit into the building of America in the in the in the late 19th century so um yeah just interesting yeah and to contrast with the other book The Star of the Sea it was nice to read a story that ended happily I suppose um so yeah um I will say that the ending did feel a little bit rushed to me but uh yeah it was it, it, I think he thought that himself and um yeah it was just really interesting to hear about the self-publishing process as well so uh, yeah, thanks to Jack for, uh, t for for coming to our book club. It was really fun. So the other book that some of us read and I read and liked um, was The Star of the Sea by Joseph O'Connor. Um, but I will say that the majority of the, uh, the majority of the people in the book club that did attempt to read this didn't finish it because a lot of people absolutely hated it. <laughs> Which is, yeah, it's, it just seems to be kind of a chalk or cheese book. Um, it 
is set again during the Great Irish Famine. So it has a lot of strands to it, I suppose, and it moves back and forward in time quite a bit. Um, so in the first chapter, you are meeting the passengers who are embarking on this Star of the Sea. So there are like the third class passengers, uh, there's the captain, um, but also there is uh, one kind of first class family who is like the Earl of Clifton, I think. Um, so like a la big landlord in County Galway who has just sold his estate and is emigrating to America with his family. And um, yeah, there are, there you kind of know, I suppose, that they're, they, they, these people on the ship must be connected in some way but you don't know how from the start especially if they're made and um, you get a feeling she has a past but you learn about it gradually through the book as it flashes back to pre-famine times yeah I just thought it was such a really interesting like complicated portrayal of uh, Ireland during the famine and probably really more like immediately before the famine really uh, I just thought it was very different it's kind of hard to know what to say about this because it was so complicated and I suppose some things just stuck in my mind more than others um like I thought that um they I, th I think he's the Earl of Clifton I, I, I probably remember that wrong I suppose you know the different generations of his family how they dealt with their tenants how his tenants perceived him what he was actually like I wouldn't by any means say it was like rewriting history or trying to portray like a sunshiny portrait of landlords during the famine or anything like that um, it was just very like multi-layered Lord Kingscourt that's his name I suppose he's one of the characters but then the other one the other main character would be the maidservant and you follow her story which is like really tragic and, and very hard to read in some places but then along with all that there's kind of this um, plot there's this very shady character going around that you he, he says from the outside he's going to murder somebody and it's kind of following his motivations for that and how he's going to do it and uh, yeah just really so so much for this story and um, and then in the, they're obviously traveling slowly towards America and it's saying how many days at sea there what their provisions are like how many people have died that day significantly and what oh this is like a major typhus outbreak on the ship as there often were on those coffin ships as they're called so um yeah just a really really complicated book and uh yeah I'll have to read more Joseph O'Connor like very different from um the more recent book of his I read because that was kind of more purely a thriller whereas this is very much kind of thriller with historical fiction mixed really really well so uh yeah would recommend well I liked it <laughs> but like maybe approach a caution because a lot of people didn't like it either just I suppose it is very very dark it's a very very dark book which was why it was a good contrast with Briarhill to Brooklyn because that was more of a positive outlook you kind of knew that there was a happy story at the end. Um, so another historical fiction I read was uh, actually a buddy read with Nikki from Red Dot Reads which is lovely so thanks to Nikki for reading that with me. That was A God in Ruins by Kate Atkinson. I've wanted to read this for ages but especially since rereading Life After Life so they're kind of companion novels to each other. Life After Life follows a character called Ursula um, in the first part of the 20th century but primarily during the Blitz. This actually follows her brother Teddy in the most confusing and mind-blowing way and that's definitely what struck me and Nikki I think was just it, 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 this book jumped around in time so so much it was like it, it was an absolutely roller coaster you'd be in the 1980s and then all of a sudden it's in 1910 and then you'd be in 1950 and then you'd be in 1945 and uh yeah it was just it, it did take a long it did take a while to um acclimatize <laughs> but when I did I really really enjoyed it from life after life and I don't think you need to read I, I don't think you need to read life after life first but I know I'm really glad that I did because you kind of picked up on extra information that you were given things hinted at in the first book or like characters are completely wrong about other characters in the first book and that you see more details on in this book and that was just really fascinating but maybe it should work easier equally well the other way around like maybe that's the point of a companion novel instead of a sequel um but yes Teddy in the like this is really Teddy's book you do say get some point of views from other characters but it's principally Teddy what you know about it from the first book is he is kind of the favorite child everybody really really likes him and he's a bomber pilot during the second world war oh god where to start so, so the parts of the, this book that are set in the uh, future, like in the like 1960s, 1980s timeline, follow him as he meets his wife and the relationship he has with her, which is 
very complicated at some time and his daughter um his daughter is very difficult to like sometimes um and even his grandchildren which um yeah they, they're a bit more likable but um yeah just a, such a complicated family and uh, i'll talk about the, maybe i'll stick with this timeline first probably the main theme in this part of the book was aging and I did find it really difficult to read at some parts and maybe if you do find that difficult topic to read about um like aging relatives or aging parents maybe approach a caution because um the reason that Teddy's daughter is so difficult to like I, I found it very hard to read about her treatment uh, or the way she viewed Teddy as he was getting older um and you know there's a lot about kind of the difficulties of moving into um you know sheltered housing or care homes uh, I, I i don't want to imply that it was like abusive but it definitely came across as very like brash or she was like trying to get him to throw out his possessions and um yeah it's just um or you know saying that she couldn't deal with him in her house or things like that it was just it, it was quite hard to read um but she did have i suppose complications to her character as well like she had quite a difficult childhood sometimes obviously my preference being for historical fiction I absolutely found um Teddy as a bomber pilot I found those storylines really really interesting and really well written and um I suppose you, the few books that I have read about pilots you tend to read them about like fighter pilots um I never read a book focusing on a bomber pilot before so um yeah it was just great to see that and they had such high mortality rates and I suppose it was especially interesting reading about Teddy as a bomber pilot when Ursula's book was so much about the Blitz and was just very much from like the other side and I think what was interesting as well is like Teddy and his daughter like I, this must be a really common experience for like that just that generation like, I don't know how the generation immediately after the war like it must have been the, it, the generally the generational gap of the like parents that fought in the wars or potentially both wars and um and their children I don't know it, it's just such a different experience and um yeah they, like I, I suppose Teddy's daughter is very she would see herself as like a peace activist and she's quite critical of what Teddy did during the war so um yeah it was just such a complicated book I'd really really recommend it and uh yeah I'll definitely have to read more Kate Atkinson because um I really really enjoyed this um I think I'd probably still prefer Life After Life but um I suppose yeah that, that book just has so much more into it. I will say that the thing about Life After Life is you know Ursula's multiple lives um there isn't really that aspect of it in this book even though I thought there might be but um yeah it's more of a like street book if if so many timelines could be called a street book at all. Um, so yes, that's all the historical fiction. Complete pivot to things that are far less serious. Um, so yeah, I, I, as you know, I've just had a really busy few months and uh, when I did have time, sometimes I just wanted to read really uh, fun or light uh, fiction. So the first I'm going to talk about is uh, Red, White and Royal Blue. I think this is my third reread of this. I just have an audiobook and um, yeah, just I had to get some stuff done that was quite tedious and uh, it was the perfect listen. Um, um, to try and just power through it and I know the story quite well and um, yeah I probably am a little bit more interested in like American president stuff now that after Joe Biden came and visited um, Ireland quite recently um, I don't know I suppose that was kind of in the back of my mind and I wanted to read it. Um, what can I say about this really it's just um, really light fun romance read um, it's male male romance and it is about the first son of the United States Alex and bad names and a prince in England and yeah they just end up having this really um it's really enemies to lovers uh, with emphasis on the lovers I think it's really quite fun another contemporary that was marketed at me aggressively on Instagram and I don't even mind because it was really fun is uh, falling hard for the royal guard obviously I suppose with the coronation and stuff this just looked like a fun read to read at, at that weekend and it did not disappoint it was the most beautiful sunny weekend and I just read it out in the hammock the really cool thing about this 
this is the author actually lives in the Tower of London because her father is a beef eater. So yeah, she knows what it's like to live in the Tower of London. That was definitely my favorite thing about this book. Like when I did visit the Tower of London, I knew that and you could like, uh, it was just, it, it, imagine living in the Tower of London, just really, really cool. Um, so yeah, she kind of deals with like the cool parts of that, but also the kind of more mundane things she lives. She works at like the ticket desk and uh, some of her colleagues are really mean to her and uh, just all the struggles she has with that. Um, but of course it is a romance, uh, so she ends up um, falling, as it says, for one of the royal guards. And I think she actually, I think the author's boyfriend is actually a royal guard as well, but she's very keen to emphasize that you know, this is fiction, it is not a retelling of their romance or anything. Um, yeah, I just, I loved all the history bits. Um, I loved the portrayal of the Tower of London. To some extent, I liked, the, I liked most of the romance, but I did feel like some parts were just like, oh, there is one part where, I, I don't want to spoil the book, but like he ends up picking her up in a car and I was kind of just like, rolling my eyes it was just too, too it was too it was, it was too cliche I just <laughs> I couldn't get on board with it but um yeah it was it was a lovely romance and I will say it was kind of it was very very clean romance if that's what you're looking for um which sometimes sometimes I prefer I don't mind a bit of like steamy romance but I think most of the time I prefer I prefer a clean romance so um yeah just I, I did I re read it on ebook and I enjoyed it so much that I think it'll probably just be a kind of a like guilty pleasure read <laughs> so I did buy it on paperback when I saw it in the shop so yeah it it, it, it was a fun one. So the second last book I'm going to talk about then was actually another book club read and this is Strange Sally Diamond um, which is by an Irish author who I can't remember just at this moment, Liz Nugent. This continues with the theme of books that you absolutely would not believe would be so dark and are that dark. So um, there are many trigger warnings for this um, especially for, for, for abuse um, but the, the you see the blurb on the back cover would lead you to believe it's more comedic, which it's not. So Sally, I suppose, through circumstances that are revealed in the book has quite an unusual personality. She takes things very literally. Her father says when he dies um, to leave him out with the rubbish um, and they have an incinerator, so she attempts to incinerate his body um, and that's discovered and um, yeah. Uh, I don't want to reveal any of the dark, darker aspects because I think it's best to go in without knowing, re reading them. But um, yeah, just so you know that it definitely, there's very, very, very dark themes in this book. There is kind of another aspect um, through, you know, when Sally's father dies, she kind of ends up having to get more involved in her community and she gets to know some friends through that. Uh, it's set in County Roscommon and I, what I really loved about this book is it kind of dealt with the story of like, um, immigrants um, into the town and you know um, there was some racism towards them but then some other people are really supportive and there are some towns in Roscommon and that part of Ireland that have had a lot of um, immigrants move in so I thought it was just really interesting to see like a realistic portrayal of that but uh, yeah I really don't want to say any more about this book um, in the end I absolutely loved it even though the ending kind of uh, broke my heart a bit but um, yeah just just it, it, the thing that's going to stick out to me is just it's, it's so dark um so yes and then the final book i'm going to talk about um is alilu bop uh, by rurio balia and um, so this is an irish language book and I, I oh my god i like i had i read the, i started reading this at the end of march i think and i um i, I read bits and pieces of it uh, going along and then the second half i read it all in one day and um, so i'm just really really happy this is the first book completely in irish that i've read um i was surprised by how easy i found it like i didn't uh, if there were any I, I don't think there were any words that I didn't know um, and if there were I just didn't bother looking them up but um, do you know and I, I also kind of read it out loud um, it kind of got me thinking like probably I don't know probably our accents are especially in Galway are probably more adapted to speak Irish than English but um, yeah it was and it was just a really good book as well uh, you really need to look a bit harder for Irish language books and <laughs> thanks so much to my teacher um, Mrs Brown very very belated thank you for this book it was such a good experience um, and yes, it's about uh, these two siblings who are living with their father and their mother who has died quite recently. So they're just trying to cope. Um, at the start of the book, um, the brother has sold his computer um, to buy an electric guitar and he's in a band and his he knows his father will disapprove. Uh, the sister ends up being drawn into the secret. And uh, yeah, the brother and father have a really difficult relationship and I think that was just portrayed really, really well. Um, and yeah, just a really engaging book. I really enjoyed it and uh, yeah, 
yeah definitely I won't be if I do see any other Irish language books that interest me around I, uh, I'd be braver to pick them up now I think um so yeah that's it for my May reading wrap-up thanks for listening thanks for watching and I'll see you next Thursday for my next video